<sighs> Sit tight, I'm gonna need you to keep time. Come on, come on. Just snap, snap, snap your fingers for me. Right, welcome to a new podcast. Pointless witticisms. Well, not really a podcast so much as dumb videos that I'll be making. The purpose of this is to talk about things that are completely pointless. Or almost would be... It's stuff that doesn't really have much meaning. Or, like, at least that I don't feel would change you on any meaningful way beyond just, Ha! That was a thing! You might bring it up in casual conversation with somebody else. You might just think about it at some point or another. But really, it's just going to be something that you spot on telly or on Netflix and think, Oh, that sounds interesting, and maybe you'll record it, maybe you'll cue it up because you've watched everything else good on Netflix, which, to be honest, doesn't seem to take too long these days. And then you sit down afterwards and you go, "What? why did I do that? Why did I waste two hours or so on literally nothing of worth? Well, that's the sort of question that I intend to be answering here. Or at least... No, I don't think I'm actually answering that at all. I think I'm just telling you more dumb things that I saw. That are, of course, completely pointless. I am your host, a foppish Brit. Of... Nondescript... Gender orientate... Well, I say nondescript. Of no real interest in gender or sex. And of no real interest in politics these days beyond the ah uh, Brexit ah uh, oh no it's in the news again sort of thing that occupies most of Britain. This is a bit of a pilot. I'm not certain how to conduct a podcast or even this sort of YouTube thing. My experience before has just been in a sort of in-universe narrative radio broadcastery thing. But that was, of course, with a sort of made-up voice or whatever, where this is more sort of my own in a natural format. Anyway, 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 anyway. Anyway, today we will be talking about Anomaly, the 2016 film. In episode one, they stole Mickey Smith's body. Anomaly is the second film that I have watched, directed by Noel Clarke. He is a British director, producer, slash actor, who will likely never attain a position more vaunted, more vaunted than, oh hey, it's that guy from Doctor Who! him having been a supporting character during Russell T. Davies' time in charge of the show, and the first black companion in the show's history. Anomaly is a film that he directed that stars him as the lead hero, and as the lead villain, with an evil British villain having taken control of his body, and every so often he has nine minutes to be himself again, having no memory of the time that he was gone. What this means is that Noel Clarke is playing both a streetwise hero and a posh villain, and the director and the producer. Now, I said that it was the second film that I've watched because he also did another film that would likely fit onto something like this. It's called 4321. It's a film with four female leads that sees us watch the same day from each of the four economically and personality diverse protagonists' perspectives, with Noel playing a working class baddie that sort of shows up in the connecting plot. Now there's a posh girl going to America to make love to her rich online suitor, the one working at a one-stop, which is like a gas station supermarket for any Americans in the audience, uh, the gay one who wears clothes that say stuff like, I'm a vegetarian, and gets locked in a panic room with her girlfriend, and the quiet one that we should all be worried about. It was a quirky film, I think is the best way to describe it. It's a bit of a chick flick, and it's also the sort of film where the humour is stuff like a guy looks up one of the protagonist's skirts, only for all the girls to beat him up, and then a Scotsman punishes him by sitting on his face. That, that's what 4321 was like. Now, 
Important question, will Noel Clark ever escape the shadow of Mickey Smith? Probably, in the eyes of any Americans in the audience who've never seen Doctor Who, or watched Noel Clark on the uh, Doctor Who special of Weakest Link, or watched any episodes of The Weakest Link for that matter. Now, many of you might not even know what Doctor Who is, so in favour of clarifying that, Doctor Who is a British television show where an oddly dressed British person follow formerly just a British man, but now with the addition of actress Jodie Whittaker, we can have just about any British person play the Doctor, and that's exciting for every female fan of the show that wanted to be the Doctor instead of the Doctor's companion. See, the Doctor, they travel through time and space, and they are accompanied by a companion, usually a 20-something woman, and sometimes, when they want to make it seem like the 20-something woman doesn't have a crush on them, they throw in the 20-something woman's boyfriend, and Noel Clark played that boyfriend for one of the, uh, well, for the first companion of the new revived Doctor Who series starting in 2005, compared to the old one that had been running since the 60s until it died a slow, slow death. Now, in an episode where the Doctor met back up with some of the old companions from the show, Sarah Jane Smith, played by the late Elizabeth Slader, who herself went on to star in a spin-off TV show for kids, and her robot dog canine appear, and in that episode Sarah Jane Smith talked to the Doctor's current companion, and Noel Clarke's character, Mickey Smith, talked to the robot dog. And he discovered that while his girlfriend Rose is the new 20-something woman, he is the new robot dog, which fits because he's the computer-savvy hacker and that's sort of what the dog used to do. And that's when his character changed and grew, and decided to only show up in future episodes if he was allowed to carry a very big gun with him around at all times. Uh, you might think I'm joking here, but he has a gun in every episode he's in after this one. Now, why was that important to talking about The Anomaly? Because The Anomaly is a film where Noel Clark gets to carry around very big guns, and get tortured by Americans, and play a posh bad guy, and a lower class hero, and do all his own stunts. Now, I loved it, but you probably shouldn't watch The Anomaly. It's a film that feels like it would be better as a sci-fi short story, and I've seen a few films like that, but none that were as blatant about it as The Anomaly. First off, the plot sounds like a sci-fi short story from the 1960s, and the odd sort of 20 minutes into the future setting helps that a little bit, even if seeing Noel Clarke in any sort of science fiction setting will have people going, oh, where's David Tennant? Particularly when there are blimps in the sky in the same fashion as they were in Noel Clarke's episode of Doctor Who. Well, one of them. Now, funnily enough, that's also the one where he has to act as a meaner, eviler version of himself. Now, in Anomaly, though, the uh, protagonist, a man, walks up with, uh, wakes up with no memory of what's happening, with only 9 minutes and 47 seconds to live his life in between sessions of another evil personality controlling him. And he uses that time and the uh, tries to figure out what's happening between these jumps of memory, and to go and save a poor kidnapped boy on the uh, side. So he's got this whole heroic goal atop the more pressing goal of freeing himself from enslavement and being completely taken over. Uh, he was suffering from PTSD from the loss of his wife when the whole mind control -y dudes got to him and that's sort of carrying him through the film and serves as this driving motivation and possibly a reason for the, um, well, definitely a reason for the amazing fighting skills that he has that keep putting things into this slow motion weird camera style. It's this sort of artsy thing, a bit like, um, if you ever watch the, um, Dread film with Carl Urban, that's sort of the style of slow motion no no dreads one is arty and likes showing little details this is more like if somebody wanted to recreate the coolness of the matrix any it it gets a bit repetitive the love interest in this film is of course a prostitute that lost her first kid and that is her sort of motivation because she lost her kid and Noel Clarke's character lost his wife so they're both needing a family in this it's also great that he only had sex with her while he was under mind control so you know our hero has that level of purity uh, but is still kind and courteous to prostitutes as well now, Noel Clark rescues her from that life by giving her enough money that she should be able to escape from her pimp, but she doesn't, but she does fall in love with him in the end anyway, and save him, and help him stop the whole evil conspiracy, and they foil the bad guy's plot to take over the world with mind control. I... 
it's sort of built up to this, like, reveal of what the plot is. But of course, if you've watched any trailers, which you most likely haven't, because I don't think many people will have even heard of this film, but the trailer, of course, goes on this big, like, tirade about how he's freeing all of humanity, sort of thing. Uh, now, there's technically two bad guys in this film. That's evil Noel Clarke and evil Noel Clark's sidekick. So he's playing friend- this sidekick is playing friendly with Noel when Noel is the bad guy, and when he thinks Noel is the bad guy as well, so, like, there's a few scenes where he'll try and intimidate the evil and posh British attitude so that his, uh, sidekick is still able to talk to him about the plan. And, yeah, the, the sidekick's great, though, because it's an American baddie, and it's hilarious to have an American baddie against a British hero. It just sounds fun having someone trying to be all sinister in American up against No Clark's Landoner talking. Important question about this film. Is it any good? No. It really isn't, but it is an absolute hoot to see that guy from Doctor Who playing a posh villain. Uh, does it show that Noel Clark is the director of this film and the star of this film? Yes, it shows quite a bit. You can definitely tell he is the hero and such. This is sci-fi camp, but it's got that guy from Doctor Who, and it's an early sci-fi 60s sort of story replete with, like, mind-controlling things, scientists caring about their sons, lost children, hookers with hearts of gold, military veterans, clever tricks based around the core premise, such as um, both sides trying to game the whole 9 minutes and 47 seconds thing and preempt it or figure out what to do in the next one, leads to this neat little bit in the middle, which is almost a montage of changes and pushes in us into the final act. It's almost certainly not a smart movie, but it's definitely on par with those little sci-fi short stories you get in anthology books, and those are usually fun to read. It's just, would you spend an hour and a half reading one of those short stories? Yeah. Anyway. I have had a bit of fun doing this, actually. It's quite nice to get the mic out for something other than, um... I mean, the last podcast I was doing, I was acting as this polite and chipper but slightly sociopathic serial murderer with a charismatic tone oozing with, um... I don't know what to say it was oozing with. It was just sort of, like, deliberately camp and pompous. Yeah. That was fun to do, but this is more its own thing, and I intend to do a few more in the future. Uh, the next one, actually, is about um, a film based on the book Vampires from Space, and if that doesn't sound like the dumbest or most amazing film you've heard of, then you've clearly been, like, let down in the past by stuff like shark to puss versus whale sh no just like whale wolf versus shark to puss whatever those asylum films or whatever because b movies these days are a different creature to like b movies back in the era of practical effects and pompous things because l vampires from space yeah it has patrick stewart turn into a woman that's a thing but yeah, tune in next time if you can be bothered to, and I'll probably stick a warning in next time for when the thing just sort of dissolves into me rambling in my comments at the end. Thanks for listening if you do.